you've been so, so kind to me. Can you sing before I spoke a word? Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. Because you've been so, so good to me. Yes, you have, Lord. I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. Cause you've been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Say you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. Never so full, still your love far from me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no words, when I felt no words, you paid it all for me. been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, He chases me down, fights the ground, fights the ninety-nine. I could I don't deserve it. Say you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never winning, reckless love. Come on, can we sing? Oh, the overwhelming, never winning, reckless love. Oh, it's 
Jesus had for us. It says he was bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed. Can we even fathom the love that he has for us that, that could that, that could make himself go to something like this? Lord, we thank you for your reckless love that you gave it all away for us. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for every single thing that you do for us through our lives and that reckless love that never ends. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
thanks, Josh. Uh, let's just continue to be in the attitude of prayer and in worship. Uh, uh, I mean, we can talk about the love of God every day of our lives and we will still not fully understand it. Um, I just want us to just take a second, take a minute. Um, I, let's pray that the Holy Spirit will give us a new perspective of God's love uh, today. want to read this scripture uh, then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon do you see this woman I came into your house you did not give me any water for my feet but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair you did not give me a kiss but this woman, from the time I entered, has not, not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. For she loved much. So in this attitude of, uh, as we continue, uh, move on into uh, the next session, I pray that we will, uh, I just want to encourage us all to uh, just have this heart that is open for a new perspective of God's love for us today. Um, because I think as Christians, we can get um, overly familiar. Um, but uh, yeah. One second. <clears throat> So, yeah, um, but today we have um, a person who loves black coffee, espresso, who loves to walk uh, long distances and it's just an absolute uh, sweet, sweet person. Um, this is none other than Sharon Thomas, our very own Sharon Thomas. So <laughs> whenever you just put your hands together yeah. for Sharon Thomas. Okay, Thank wait, wait, wait. You. Yeah, if you don't know who Sharon Thomas is, uh, wave, keep waving your hand, okay? Keep, come on, just keep doing this. Come on, Sharon, wave. Oh, gosh. Wave, wave. Yeah, keep doing it for another 10 seconds. Hold it up. Oh, boy. People need to see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is uh, Sharon Thomas for everybody. Okay, Sharon, over to you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Pastor Rashan. Um, yeah, I'm really embarrassed. Um, uh, thank you, Josh. That was an amazing time in worship, like um, to know about God's love. Uh, so I'll be sharing about God's love. It's like something that we cannot comprehend. But let's try just to understand. I hope you guys can see my screen. Ah, uh, yes. Mm, okay. A, a part uh, of it, I think, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, it just speaks about love. It just speaks about. Uh, I think it's the most uh, common uh, description and definition of love that we can have. Like the whole chapter talks about. So we'll just dig in a little deeper. So instead of uh, defining what love is, uh, I'd like to go with why do we need love? Uh, it's because the starting of the uh, chapter, it just talks about 
uh, why we need love because it just says that without love, you're nothing. We just have no worth. It just says depending on what we possess or what deeds we do, what power we have, what knowledge we have, uh, regardless of all those, if we have no love, then we have nothing and we are nothing. And that is why love is important. Then we go on to what love is. So um, every time I think love, it just, um, I don't know, it's very positive for me. Like it's a very positive uh, emotion. If I think of anger, it's a negative emotion. So uh, love just brings in a lot of positivity. It's just like, oh, wow. But um, in chapter 13, verses 4 to 8, it just defines what love is. It is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not proud, rude, self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs, rejoices in the truth, always protects, it trusts, hopes, and endures. And it never fails, it never dies. So just that one word, it has so many things. It's not just like, you know, love. I love someone, I love my parents, I love God, and that's it. It has so many things. You've got to be patient, you've got to be kind, you've got to be uh, very humble and not be angry and you know, rejoice and always trust, hope and persevere. Um, so that, were, that is what love is. Um, so the last part talks about a love that never dies. Uh, so as in it is everlasting, it is unchanging, it is unfailing. That's the kind of love that should exist. So um, here is the scripture. So it's, it just said that inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when complete arrives, our incompletes will be cancelled. And it goes on to say that until the completeness, we have three things to do. Trust steadily in God. Hope consistently and love extravagantly. So it says that out of the three, trust, hope, and love, love is the greatest. How great is his love? How great is God's love then? In Psalms uh, 103, 11, it says, For his unloving, unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. So it just, we cannot just fathom the distance, right? So it just, it's huge. It's, um, it's his unfailing love for us, for each one of us. So it just does not discriminate. It doesn't say that, um, hey, you belong to a certain caste or you belong to a certain country, you belong to certain beliefs. So I will love you and I will not love you. It just says that my love is for you, for everyone. And it is just um, everlasting, forever. Um, and then it just says that love is what God is. So 1 John chapter 4, verses 18 to 10, he says, anyone who does, does not know love does not know God, for God is love. So God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son so that we can have eternal life. So he just defined what love is. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his own son. When, when uh, it comes to loving someone, it does, like, we do have to, um, you know, express ourselves. We need to show them. And that is by our actions and deeds. So this is how God showed that he loves us by sending his only son uh, to sacrifice for all of us. So even the people who crucified Jesus, everybody gets the salvation. Everybody has the love of God uh, for them. So, um, you know, the love that we each, uh, we all have, like, you know, towards our friends, towards someone, or towards our parents, relatives, um, that love depends on so many things. It depends on um, how they are as a person. It depends on how good of a day I'm having. Like, if it's a good day, I have love to give. If it's a bad day, uh, no. So it's kind of like that. Um, and it depends, um, like, how is my mood? Uh, how has my life been so far? Uh, all of that things. But God is not like that. We cannot comprehend his love. So his is like a tough love, a love that is sacrificial. He gave his only son. One love that is willing to be nailed to a cross for someone else's sin. 
it's not dictated by how the other person is. It's just, it's just give, it's just give. When you are in love and you know, like your parents, our parents love us. So they give, they provide, they always provide for us out of concern and out of love. So that's the kind of love. And if we compare it to the love of God, that is into like infinite amount. So that's the kind of love that we have like for each one of us. And here we say it says that Jesus doesn't point in condemnation to our past, but he points with compassion to our future. He doesn't see where, what we did and what kind of a past we all had uh, and what kind of plans we make, what kind of people we hang out with, uh, what kind of thoughts we have. Um, are, are we reading the Bible or not? Are we uh, meditating or not? Or uh, all of those, like he doesn't care. He just loves you. It, it, so therefore it's like an unconditional love. Regardless of what you've done so far, uh, your self-image, brokenness, problems, his, his love remains constant. It's never changing. His love seeks no validation. It adds value to the beloved. It, add, it adds value to each one of us because of his love. Not a need seeking, but need meeting love. Philippians chapter four verse 19 says, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which we have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So that's the kind of love that uh, you know God talks about. It's not about uh, uh, like, okay, I need these things. So, you know, I love somebody, so I need these things from them. But it's rather, I love somebody, so I'm gonna, you know, give, give to them. It's all about giving. So how can we express love to God? So we know God loves us, that's for sure, because his word says so, right? So how can we express our love to God? through obedience. So by obeying his word, obeying his commands and um, sticking to his principles and living a way that is like Jesus. Uh, our obedience to God, it reflects our love for him. Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands and that's it. If you love God, keep his commands and that's how you express that you love them. It's the same with parents, I guess. You know, um, we don't directly tell them like, hey, dad, hey, mom, I love you. It's just through our actions, um, whatever they've taught us, whatever we, uh, they have told us, we always keep that in our minds and we always, you know, lead our lives that way that they will be happy. So that's the kind of love that God has. So though the seasons change, your love remains. So this talks about waiting on God, uh, abiding on God. So we know that God is love. So next we abide in him and we rest in him. So, uh, you know, if we live in this world, we have uh, to think about so many things like uh, we have to think about what to do later, you know, today, what to do next week, what to do tomorrow. But um, we also do think about what we did uh, yesterday, what we did two years before and all those thoughts. It's all about us and it's all about worries. So what God tells is that I love you so you can chill, like relax. You can, you know, just have peace. And the only way we can do that is through prayer. We have to pray. So every time you worry, you pray, you just have to uh, make sure that, you know, you are giving importance to God. Uh, you're focusing on God instead of all the things, all the other things that's happening in your world. Um, so Philippians uh, 4, 6 to 7, uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it's very simple. Just don't be anxious. Don't worry. That's what God says. Just, just pray. Just talk to him. If talking is too weird, uh, just, you know, just sing. Just sing. Proclaim in his affirmations and sing out loud. Uh, you can dance, do whatever, but do not worry. Second is think positive. Just entertain only healthy thoughts. Um, it's easier than said, of course. Um, uh, but then the thing is, uh, we always think, uh, what if I had done that? What if I had, okay, 
what if I had done that or what if uh, that happened, all that, what if situations, I think everybody would be uh, you know, doing this. So what we have to do is we cancel them with exalting God for who he is. And uh, we have to go back to God's word to supply us with the truth because it is our source of hope. We ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. This is the way that we can be positive. We can only be positive if we know that we have somebody with who is backing us up. We, we have hope and that is through God. And it is very important to keep ourselves remind, uh, reminding each, each of us every day that, okay, I have God, I have God uh, with me. And everywhere I walk and everything I do, I have God. He, he's watching over me. So... In that way, you, you know, you'd never have to think about uh, what if that went wrong or what if that doesn't work out, what then? Just got to trust in God. And third is to be grateful. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18, which is, uh, says, Always be joyful, never stop praying, and be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. We all belong to Christ and we know that and we acknowledge that we accept Christ, right? So what we're going to do is if we know that somebody is backing you up, what are you going to do? You're going to be happy just, you know, uh, because no more negative things will come after you or it will uh, not stop you. You have God. So what you got to do is just be thankful. You know, people who are uh, most thankful are the people who are most happy. So we got to always thank God and always thank each other. Always find reasons to be thankful. So his truth. God the Father, he loves us. It is the most simple thing and it's the most simple thing that he's told us that I love you. But, you know, as I said, during the chaos, we tend to forget that he loves us and, uh, you know, he's there. We just uh, thinking of what to eat today or what, what, what for dinner. Am I going to, you know, get my coffee tomorrow? Things like that. So it just got to focus. And the only way is that you, you, uh, you give, like we, we should give our time to God. We should just make a schedule and say, like, okay, first all my, the, the morning goes to God my night i'll just give it to god just spend time with god so that's how uh, we can do that so since it's the lockdown i think we have like a lot of time on our hands that we'd either be stuck in traffic or at work uh, so by his word he reveals the truth and the truth is what it sets us free from all kind of guilt and everything that stops us like you know if you're going uh, for something new and you always wanted to do it in um, maybe a workplace or uh, maybe, uh, you know, a project or something. You wanted to always do this or pursue something in your life. Um, at that time, uh, just uncertainties and because of all that, you start to waver, right? You start to shake. You're like, maybe, maybe not. I don't think I'll make it. But we got to just trust in his love. Uh, John 8, 32. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And what the truth is, is, is the Bible. The Bible tells you the truth. Uh, the Holy Spirit, it lets you know the truth. So we have all of this, these things, right? And uh, so when we rest on God, we just have to have the trust in, we believe that God is enough and his love is backing me up. He's just going to provide for me as he is always provided. He's going to defend me as he is always defended. So, and then we go forward with our plans. Uh, you have to believe that uh, God fills you up with the Holy Spirit daily. He will awaken the dreams and visions you had once that life tried to bury. We're going to really believe that. And every morning, we're going to just ask the Holy Spirit to come into you and then uh, so that you can have that bond. Every morning, uh, we can do that, right? Uh, and so what the Holy Spirit does is it convicts us, right? He convicts us and conviction, it only comes from compassion and love, unlike condemnation. And conviction, it just takes us closer to God. It helps us to overcome and helps us to realize the truth. Um, realization, again, is a big thing. You know, every time... Uh, something happens, you got to acknowledge it. Acknowledgement is the first step 
a uh, lot of people might say that oh god loves me but uh, i don't feel anything that's because you got to accept it so before accepting god's love you got to acknowledge god's love that there is something god you know god's love and it is given to me so i will receive it so you got to ask and you will receive it that's what god said um our light our source so um so this is basically how you know um, we feel the way we feel you know after so many uh, years on earth um, it just you know there's a point where we all could lose control where we all could just feel a little empty or a little different so at those times we could realize that god is um, staying constant you know his promises remain his love it remains with you and he's just with you the whole time he walks before you he's behind you he's all around you so that's the kind of life that we need to lead so that we know that he's there with us um so he's our light he's our source right um so you know it's it's just like every time uh, you have the light uh, you have any kind of source of light and the closer you go the more it reflects on us right so the closer i go the more it reflects on me and the more i you know my face is revealed the more of me is revealed so similarly like the distance matters when it comes to light so you know it's kind of like an analogy uh, like god is our source he's our light so we got to walk closer to him daily we can't just keep the distance and expect to uh, you know a spiritual revival will just come we got to make our um you know uh work on our part and that is to go towards him and you know we got to know him as much as he knows us he knows us thoroughly but how much of him do we know so we got to ask for his presence for his favor on us um every day throughout so uh, he is our source it is in him you move live and have your being he is the source of your strength the key to your peace and the reason you live so are you connected to the source that's a question that you can ask yourself he's always guiding us it's it's a thing so uh and any time you want to uh, lead somebody or you want to go somewhere unless you move unless you take that first step it is going to be like impossible uh so god will god is always guiding you and god will guide you but unless we are we make up our minds and we decide to follow him that's the only way we can move towards when he guides us that's the only way we can move so we have to commit ourselves to following him wherever he leads so have no anxiety have no doubt that oh i don't know where god is going to lead i don't think i'm you know able to i'm not i don't think i'm capable of First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse fifty eight. She says, "So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless." So every time I read that, it's just like, uh, so I don't know. I just feel so fired up. Um, so anything you do for the Lord is never useless because He's He's watching you. He's watching your every move. and he's just going to be there and he's just going to be happy with your you know decisions so every time you make a decision you got to think about uh what would jesus do uh, how would my uh, be my father how would he feel how would my mom feel how would my god feel he's just watching over me with all that love with all that expectation so how would he feel uh you know on base of my choices based on my path the path that i decide to take so every time you confused about something you just got to you know go back to the word and just go through the word you just think so many times you would just receive what to do or through prayer you would receive the answers that you always wanted to know uh jesus in chapter uh, john chapter 9 5 he said i am the light of the world right but also in matthew 5 jesus goes on to say that you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven 
so he says that i am the light of the world he also says that you all are also the light of the world so he wouldn't have said that hey you you're the light of the world without doing anything he's obviously prepared a way for you he's obviously set it all out for you so he he doesn't like expect us to be the light without doing anything he's already done he's you know the works all finished and he he just uh, set out the path for you you got to trust in him and walk because uh you know because of his promises you know that you know your father has the greatest plans for you he cannot have like uh something that you cannot do he made sure that you'd be fit to do whatever he's called you to do so what do we need to do do we need to be the light um so how exactly do we do that because of jesus' extravagant love for us we have life we have freedom and hope so we have all of those things because of god's love so uh um, what do we do we got to just keep it to ourselves uh or think about it be happy give thanks to god of course but we got to like we got to go like every deed that we do every action that we do every thought that we have it should just glorify god right we should step out and love one another that's what god's called us to do we he just has um he said i love you and he also said go love one another right you love me you also love one another one another doesn't really mean just you know christians or just people who are who know god but also to other people all the other people your neighbors your friends or uh, people you work with people you go to college with everybody so you got to share that you know humongous amount of love that god is giving you um so in first john chapter 4 verse 19 is that uh, he says that oh yeah we love him because he loved us first he loved us first and he he's you know he's it's his move and he's shown us by giving his only son right for us for all the sinners of the world for all of our sins to be forgiven he he formed that covenant with us he gave us the holy spirit and all these are actions of love uh every time you know uh, we feel a uh, kind of empty kind of sad you just got to realize oh you know what god loves me he's watching me right now and you know every time i stretch out my hand he's already stretched uh, stretched out his hand and he's going to hold me and he's going to protect me and you know it's like all is well so you know god i have god with me um uh, so when god calls you what will you do um first john chapter 4 it says our love for others is our grateful response to the love god first demonstrated to us so if you cannot love other people whom you can see how can you truly love god whom you cannot see and he has given his uh, this command those who love god must also love their fellow believers so we got to um, what god says is that we could only uh, you know respond to the love that god gives us by sharing it with people by letting other people also have it um, and also by loving one another by keeping his commands and it's it's just very simple when he says that you know if you cannot love people who you can see you can't just say that hey i god i love you but then you know go you go to your workplace we go to our uh, you know uh, uh, reunions and then you be like oh that person oh that teacher just oh so we can't do that right because we got to just open our hearts forgive people forget everything and just show the love of god because he's given us so much of love that we cannot even think of right so we got to also like it's not only that those who don't know christ those who don't know the love of god that you can go share your love with you got to also share your love with believers with each other so that we can like push each other towards you know god we can just uh, you know make sure that we're all moving forward moving towards god never changing but everlasting that's the kind of love that we are all are given and that's the kind of love that we all are expected to give to others it shouldn't be de- uh, depend on what they did or uh, how we are feeling um, or what rumors they you know there are about those people but we just do not judge but we uh, see them as 
Jesus would see them. No matter the circumstances, we can rest in the presence of God's amazing love. Amen. There are, uh, there are hearts that are yet to experience the power of God and yet to receive that love that he has given us, right? He has given everybody, but some people just don't know it yet. So our work as people who receive you know, all that love is to go ahead and share that love to everybody. Just let them know that, hey, your love, because I think at this time with the, you know, increase in depression, anxiety and all of that, people just don't know that maybe, uh, you know, there is a God who loves you uh, and that love cannot be measured. So that's the kind of love that there is. And you've got to make them aware of that love and, you know, let them know. And that is our mission. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. So every time, you know, you feel down or it is, you know, in the morning, just say this out loud that, you know what, I am fearfully and wonderfully made and, you know, I will glorify God and God is with me and he is an amazing God. So, you know, I'll have a great day. The kind of, uh, the God kind of love. So all that we just went through, you know, that sacrificial, unconditional love, a need, meeting love. So that's the God kind of love. And that is what it means to carry the cross. And that is what we are called to do. So will you join that greatest mission ever? Or do you want to just watch from the sidelines? You know, risk-free. I don't want to get... Yeah, misunderstood. I'm scared of what I speak. I'm not a good speaker and all of that. So do you want to do that? Or do you want to just trust in God and his plans and go forward to what he's called us to do? Go forward to this mission. Do you believe that God has intentionally created you? Or do you want to believe that you're just some cosmic accident and just floating around in space with absolutely no use at all? So it's something to... Uh, Ponder upon. Will you sink into the shadows of fear or trust the one who gives you breath? So this is the last slide, guys. And it's one of my favorite words. Every time God calls you, uh, you don't say, um, maybe uh, now is not a good time. Or, or uh, uh, it's just like, you know, my friend, you know, he really loves you. Uh, he's the best person, you know, he, he can totally do this. You don't do that. You, you just got to go forward. God's got my back. So all you got to do is say that, God, I am here. Use me for your glory. I'm here for you. You know, just whatever your plan is, I'm ready because I know you, you've got my back. I know you've you know, already laid out the foundation. You've laid out everything for me. So I'm going to just walk in trust and walk in faith. So Isaiah 6 it i heard the lord asking whom shall i send as a messenger to this people who will go for us i said here i am send me so this is what our response is supposed to be because of god's unconditional love unchanging love a love that we cannot measure so that this is the way that we can tell him that you know i acknowledge your love i accept your love here i am lord use me so that is all guys. So um, I hope you got some, you know, inspiration and understanding. So uh, let's just uh, end in prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for this unconditional, everlasting love that you have given each one of us. Lord, we acknowledge your love. We accept your love, Lord, and help us to go about and, you know, spend this love on other people and let them know of you, Lord. And through our actions, through our words, Lord, let us glorify you, Lord. Lord, help us to be that city on top of a hill that cannot be missed, Father God. Lord, I, I pray that you give us wisdom, give us understanding, uh, and help us to just rely on you, Father God. I pray that you... Uh, I pray that you anoint us with the Holy Spirit. You reveal new things to us and all the chaos, all the uncertainties, Father God, we, uh, we cancel it in your name. 
and we will walk forward knowing that you've got our backs, knowing that you are holding us tight, knowing that you are walking with us, uh, clearing our paths. Father God, help us to do great things for you, Father God. Bring a lot of glory to your name, Father God. Use us, Father God. Every time you call us, help us to be able to say that, Lord, here I am, send me. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. Uh, let's just give a round of applause for Sharon, wherever you are. So send some claps. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Um, it's a topic that is uh, very easy to be over familiar with, but also very difficult to describe and define and understand. Uh, but thank you for doing it so gracefully. Um, you know, uh, I think I think one of the points that kind of stood out for me is to accept his love. And uh, I remember a season of my life, a huge part where I couldn't accept that love uh, because of the past or whatever. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. You know, um, yeah. Hey guys, thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody for joining in, uh, for taking the time. Um, I see some of you all have are joining in for the first time. Miriam, thank you for joining. Uh, it's good to have you. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, guys. Um, hope your families are safe. Uh, continue to be safe, uh, you know. Amazing. I'll see you all next Friday. Ruben, thanks for turning your video on. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you all so much for joining. Okay, you guys have a good night. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Russian. Bye. Thanks, Steve. Bye bye. I guess see you. Huh? I see you. Bye bye.